Welcome to True Projects. In this video, we are going to explain about a project titled Fast Privacy Preserving Text Classification Based on Secure Multi-Party Computation. So now coming to the introduction part. The cutting edge strategy of fast privacy preserving text classification through secure multi-party computation stands out in the domain of data privacy and classification methodology. In a time characterized by a continual surge in a sensitive textual data, the demand for strong privacy safeguards has reached a pinnacle. This inventive approach tackles this challenge by harnessing secure multi-party computation that is SMC, guaranteeing confidentiality, while adaptability, categorizing tests. Fundamentally, the approach centers on upholding the privacy of textual data throughout the classification process, a crucial aspect in situations where preserving the confidentiality of information is of utmost importance. So now coming to the objective part for this project, the principal aim of fast preserving text classification based on secure multi-party computation is to respond to the urgent requirement for safeguarding the privacy of textual data in classification endeavors. In the digital era where there is a proliferation of sensitive information, it is imperative to employ sophisticated techniques that not only adaptability classified text, but also rigorously uphold the privacy of the underlying data. As essential, objective of this inventive approach is to exploit the capabilities of secure multi-party computation SMC is facilitating collaborative text classification without divulging individuals' input from diverse parties. This ensures that contributors to the classification process can preserve the confidentiality of their specific data, a critical necessary in scenarios where data privacy holds paramount importance. So now coming to the requirements part, here we have two types of requirements, the hardware requirements and the software requirements. In hardware requirements, operating system as Windows is required. Processor i5 and above, minimum 8 GB of RAM is required, hard disk 20 GB and above. Coming to the software requirements part, Anaconda 3 is required and Visual Studio Community version is required. So now coming to the flow of project, here first we have importing the packages. So here in this we have import, we have to import some of the packages that are NumPy and Pandas for data manipulation. SK Learn to facilitate machine learning and Matplotlib and C1 for visualization are important. Here, second, we have exploring the data set that is SMS ham spam data. Exploring the data set involves gaining a preliminary understanding of its structure, features, and content. This step often includes loading the data set into the analysis environment, example using pandas and python, and examining its dimensions, column names, and data types. For SMS ham spam data, this exploration would also involve inspecting examples of text messages labeled as ham that is non-spam and spam to understand the nature of the data and its potential challenges. The third we have data processing and cleaning. Data processing and cleaning are crucial for preparing the text data for analysis and modeling. This step involves various sub -stars. Here first we have replacing the punctuation, symbols and mentions. Stripping away unnecessary characters, symbols and user mentions to focus on the core content of the text. Second here we have removing the stop words, eliminating common words that is stop words that do not contribute significant meaning to the text and can be dis disregarded during analysis. Third here we have stemming the text, reducing words to their root or base form that is stem to consolidate variations of words and enhance the efficiency of text analysis. Fourth here we have vectorization, which is the process of converting text data into a numerical format that machine learning models can understand. In the context of SMS ham spam classification, this typically involves using techniques like TF IDF, which stands for term frequency and inverse document frequency vectorization. This step transforms the text into a matrix of numerical values, capturing the importance of each word in the dataset. Here next we have label processing. It is a crucial step when dealing with categorical data such as class labels. In the case of SMS ham spam data, this step involves converting the categorical labels ham spam into numerical format. Label encoding is a common technique for this purpose where each unique label is assigned to a unique integer. So sixth here we have feature selection using pandas i -Log. Feature selection is the process of choosing relevant features or columns for analysis or modeling. 
Using Pandas, I log this step in box, selecting specific columns from the process dataset that will serve as input features for the machine learning model. In the context of SMS ham spam classification, this might include the vectorized text features. Here next we have on 7, splitting the data to train and test. To assess the performance of a machine learning model, it is essential to split the data set into training and testing sets. The training set is used to train the model, while the testing set is reserved to evaluate its performance on the unseen data. This step ensures that the model generalizes well to new unseen text messages. Common practice involves using functions like train test split from scikit-learn to achieve a random and representative split of the data. So here, next we have eight on the building the model. So here in this building the model, it involves selecting and implementing machine learning algorithms that are suited for the specific task of SMS ham spam classification. Various algorithms can be considered each with its own strengths and weaknesses. The list algorithms indicate a diverse set commonly used in text classification tasks. So the first model here we have logistic regression, a linear model used for binary classification tasks such as ham spam classification. Next model we have random forest classifier, an ensemble learning method that builds multiple decision trees to enhance predictive performance. Next model here we have decision tree, a tree-like model that makes decision based on the features of the input data. Next we have support vector classifier that is SVC which is an algorithm that finds the hyperplane that best separates the different classes in high dimensional space. Next we have KNN which stands for K-Nearest Neighbors, a simple and effective algorithm that classifies data points based on the majority class of the nearest neighbor. Then we have XGBoost which is an implementation of gradient boosted decision trees designed for speed and performance. Then we have PPNB which stands for Perceptron Knife Base, a combination of Perceptron and Knife Base algorithms for classification tasks. Then we have Knife Base, a probabilistic model that applies Bayes' theorem with strong independence assumptions. Then here next model we have Voting Classifier, an ensemble method that combines the predictions of multiple models to improve overall accuracy. The last model here we have SVC plus RF plus LR which is an ensemble model that combines predictions from support vector classifier, RF, random forest, and LR that is logistic regression. Then on 9th here we have training and building the model. So in this, once the model are selected, next step is to train them on the labeled training data. Training involves feeding the models with input features, process, and vectorized text, along with the corresponding labels and adjusting the model's parameters to learn the patterns in the data. This process is iterative and it was optimizing the model for better predictive performance. So here next we have class framework. So in this first here we have class framework with SQLite for sign up and sign in. Class is a lightweight web application framework for Python in the context of the described project. Class is used to create a web application that incorporates user sign up and sign in functionality. SQLite, a relational database management system, is employed for storing user information securely. This combination allows the development of a web, web interface for users to register that is sign up and authenticate that is sign in before utilizing the SMS ham or spam classification service. Next, we have importing the packages. It is similar to that just I have told you above that we have to import the libraries like NumPy and Pandas for the matplotlib and etc. files we have to do. Next, here we have exporting the data set. In this, although data set exploration is typically done during the model development phase, it may also be relevant in a web application context. Understanding the data set may assess in creative and informative user interface or in providing users with context regarding the nature of the SMS ham spam classification service. Next, we have data processing and cleaning. The input provided by the user during sign up or sign in may require pre processing steps similar to those applied to the SMS ham or spam data set. This ensures consistency and standardization of user input. Techniques such as replacing punctuation, removing stop words and stemming may be applied to user provided information. So next here we have user gives input. User interacts with the web application by providing input. In the case of SMS ham spam classification, this could involve users entering a text message. Count vectorization may be employed to convert the user's text input into a numerical format suitable for input into the trained model. So here next, then we have the given input is translated and pre-processed. 
The user's input is then translated and pre-processed, similar to the pre-processing steps applied to the SMS ham spam data. This ensures that the user input aligns with the format expected by the model during prediction. Then next here we have trained model is used for prediction. The pre-processed user input is then passed through the trained machine learning model to predict whether the input text is ham or spam. This step leverages the predictive capabilities of the model developed earlier in the process. So now here on 17th you can see that final outcome is displayed to front end. The outcome of the prediction is communicated to the user through the front end of the web application. This could be a simply display indicating whether the input text is classified as a ham or spam. The front end is the user facing part of the application and it plays a crucial role in providing a seamless and initiative experience for users interacting with the SMS ham or spam classification service. So here we can see that here we have a folder which is named as templates. This folder contains all the HTML pages used in the project. It typically includes files like index.html, about.html, etc. which represent different pages of the website. Next folder here we have static. This folder consists of files ready to CSS, JavaScript and Bootstrap files. And the folder named as i.pynv file is a Jupyter notebook file which contains a combination of code, graphs and outputs all in one place. It allows the users to write and execute code in individual cells, making it a popular choice for data science. Next here we have app.py file which likely contains information related to frontend logic. It could include code written in Python that handles server-side operations such as processing user requests, interacting with the database and reviewing dynamic content to be rendered in the HTML templates. So next here we have again that .ipynv file which is a divided output file which contains a combination of code, graphs and outputs all in one place. It allows the users to write and execute code in individual cells making it a popular choice for the file. So here this is here we have our data set over here in the .csv format. Next here we have signup.db. This file appears to be the database file which is used to store the information. So now just copy the path from here. Open the anaconda prompt. Type the cd command followed by space and just paste the path over here. Now hit the enter button. And now just simply type python app.py and now hit the enter button. So after running the app.py file, the class framework will host the application link locally at the default address and port 5000 unless configured differently. Here you can see that the link has been posted over here. Just copy this link and paste it into any of the browser. Here I am using Chrome. Just paste this link over here. Now hit the enter button. So here you can see that this is our home page. Just click on sign up button. Just enter your details over here, the username, your phone number, email and your password. I have already done the registration so I am clicking on sign in button. So just enter the username and the password over here which you have created while doing the registration and now simply click on login button. Click on OK and here you can see that this is our page for the text classification. Just enter your message over here, any of the message related to the text classification. So here you can see that I have entered the text over here and now just simply click on predict button. By scrolling down below here you can see for the message which I have entered over there, text classification is a machine learning technique that assigns a set of predefined categories to open ended task text. So the label for this is the SMS type is ham. So depending upon the message you will type over there, it will detect whether the message or the SMS is ham or spam. So by clicking on the about button, you will get to know about this page. And by clicking on the home page, you will get on the home page of this and you can again check with another message. So by simply clicking out on the sign up button, you can successfully log out with this. So now coming to the conclusion part, moreover the approaches of emphasis on speed and efficiency is not worthy. In recognizing the contemporary demand for real-time processing, the system not only upholds privacy but also provides a swift and responsive solution to the challenges of text classification. This amalgamation of privacy collaboration and speed positions fast privacy preserving text classification based on secure multi-party computation as a significant advancement in the intersection of privacy preserving technologies and text analytics with broad applications across diverse domains. 
The amalgamation of cutting-edge privacy preserving techniques with efficient text classification addresses the challenges posed by the increasing volume of sensitive information in our digitally interconnected world. So here we have completed with our project. Thank you. Thank you for watching video. For more projects please visit our website www.trueprojects.in. For updates on latest project videos, please visit True Projects YouTube channel and subscribe.